Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew with Field Treasure Design. So behind me is my Ron Polk workbench and I am pumped to be bringing you the videos of how I made this thing. So when I started woodworking a few years ago, I was in a two stall garage. I had built in my own workbench and some different things there, but there wasn't really enough room for a full assembly table. Then we moved to South Carolina. We only lived in that house for about six months. Then we moved again. And so I flipped that house, remodeled it, and I had a dedicated shop, but it was pretty small. And then crazy enough, we moved again. And and so now here we are in our new place. And when I set out to design a new workspace, I thought, okay, I've got to have something that I can tear down and set up really quickly and easily to keep my workshop flow going. And the Ron Polk workbench is perfect. It can be taken apart super easily. It can be fit in my van. It can be fit in a truck. It is awesome. It's got these really cool features like spaces to put tools while you're working to get them out of your way. It's got these bench dog holes and it's got this awesome design for an outfeed for your table saw and so I had to modify it a little bit but all in all this workbench is incredible and I thought I would go ahead and just make a video showing you exactly how I made it so part one of this video series is just the main cuts as well as making and assembling the saw horses so I'd love to show you how I did it so check this out so before we get started, I want to show you my workspace. I used two inexpensive sawhorses, two 4x4x8 four by four by posts, and then a couple sheets of plywood, as well as a 4x8 sheet of insulation, just so I can make my cuts easier. Grab my Polk workbench plans, and I'm good to go. Next, I grabbed my tape and measured the required width for the top and bottom of the workbench. I busted out my Craig rip cut, which was a good alternative to not having a track saw. This is not an expensive tool, and it's actually pretty simple and straightforward to use. Although it's not my favorite way to cut rip plywood, it worked really well. The Craig rip cut works with a variety of circular saws. Here I'm using my Bosch. Now it's worth noting, I'm using a chalk line for this first one because I had never used the Craig rip cut before, and I wanted to just make sure it was straight. And here's a great example of why I love cordless tools. No cords to deal with on this cut. Okay, so I've got a top and bottom done and now I grab another sheet of plywood to cut the second top and bottom for four total. The Polk workbench plans call for the width of these to be just one eighth shy of two feet. So here you'll see me cutting just a little edge off that other side. Next, I'm gonna throw another sheet of plywood on to get all of my spacers cut. I think this is when the Craig rip cut is at its best, when there's a width of under about a foot and you just have to make repetitive cuts. As you see here, I don't have to remeasure. I just get to keep cutting as many times as I need to. Here I'm cutting six, seven inch width boards that will serve as the carcass of the workbench. Okay, all done. So just a quick review. I've got four just shy of two foot wide top and bottoms, and then I've got six seven inch width boards that will serve as the carcass. Next is the saw horses. So you grab a sheet of plywood and you can cut three saw horses out of one sheet, and then you need one more sheet to cut the fourth saw horse leg. Do a quick measurement and I'm gonna cut off a strip to get the width of the saw horses, which are three feet, 10 inches. So I got that one done and it's time to do one more. Grab the plywood, cut the width. Next, you need a straight edge. In my case, I used a four foot level to get the height of each saw horse. Go ahead and measure for the higher height, the two feet, five and three quarter inches, because this is a template. After you get the first one cut, you can pull the other one across and use it as a measurement for your other three. So cut saw horse number three, then cut number four off that other sheet. Okay, cool. Now we're ready to do some detailing on the template that will be used to make the other saw horse legs. I started by measuring the bottom of the saw horses to get my general cut lines. And by the way, all of these details are on the Paul workbench plans. Now those plans call for a five inch hole saw on these sawhorse radiuses, but I just decided to use a four and a half inch since I'm already using that for the spacers, which I'll show you in the next video. 
It's a good idea to trace the circle just so you can place your hole saw in the right spot. If you've never used a hole saw this big before, it's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you twist in the bit and then lock those two spacers in and you're good to go. Just be prepared because it can sure catch. You only have to drill about halfway because you can turn the board over and then complete the hole from the other side. I actually learned this tip from Ron Paul. It's a great tip to reduce tear out going all the way through. Here I'm just going to go about halfway and then after I'm done I'm going to flip the board over. As long as that pilot hole comes through you're able to flip the board over and then drill from the other side. So that's what I'm checking to make sure I at least got the pilot hole through. And once you're done, you flip it over and you just line up with the pilot hole. And as you can see, the tear out is minimal. After the holes are done, it's time to get the circular saw out to do the straight lines. I freehanded it, but if you need to, you could use a straight edge to help guide you. I'm going to let this roll to show you exactly how I cut each section. There are two sides of the saw horses that need notches cut out of them. So I plunge cut my circular saw into them for the straight line, and then I'm gonna grab my jigsaw here in a minute to finish up the corners. The jigsaw makes those nice clean cuts to connect the lines. Now you can see the notches that are coming out of the saw horse. Like I said earlier, there's only two of them that have the notches. The other two won't have them at all. Next, I take the jigsaw and I just went over those rounded corners just to kind of clean them up from the whole saw. Now is a good time to sand to get the edges and corners all clean because this is going to be used as a template to make the other three sawhorse legs. Next, you grab one of your sawhorse leg blanks and lay the template on top. Measure it up real nice and then screw each side down just so it doesn't move. In order to cut templates with your router, you need a collar. This one fits the Bosch, so look for one that fits your router. I'm using a spiral upcut routing bit that's perfect for cutting templates. Here I'm setting the depth of the router bit. As you can see, I want it to go just below the plywood into the foam. And then that collar goes against the template and you just gently go around tracing the cut. It's a pretty amazing process. Everything looks good, so now it's time to do the inside cut. I'm gonna let this play so you can see exactly how I do it. Boom, now just two more to do. Real quick though, I trace the notches since I need to do one more with notches. Unscrew the template and do it again.
Okay, we're done with our four sawhorse legs. Now one other leg needs to be notched. So I use that same method as I did earlier. Then I grab my circular saw and I cut off three quarters of an inch off the other two sawhorse legs. Next, you wanna use a one quarter inch round over bit to go around all the edges, just to make the edges clean and smooth for when you grab them or move them around. I did every single one, both sides, inside and out. You'll wanna sand all of the sawhorse legs again. I used 220 grit sandpaper. Now it's time for the assembly of the sawhorses. I used one and a half inch polypropylene webbing that you can buy on Amazon. These are gonna serve to hold the sawhorse legs together and then also allow them to extend outward. There are three straps that will go on the top of the sawhorse legs to hold them together. I did a quick test measurement to see if it was the right length and it's perfect. Next, you wanna burn the edges just to keep them from fraying. I went ahead and cut all six for both sawhorse leg sets. To help the process go smoothly and to keep all the measurements consistent, I grabbed my sliding square to give me that same edge for each one. So then you just make your marks on each location to make it quick and easy. To fasten the webbing to the sawhorses, I used number eight half inch pan head screws. I used four per connection. After you complete one side, you just flip it over and complete the other. Yes, now the sawhorse can stand up on its own. So now you space it out to the height that you want. For me, I wanted the top of my workbench to be at 36 inches, so I did the math Eight inches from 36 equals 28. So that's how tall I needed my sawhorse to be. So now all you have to do is measure out your webbing to be the proper length for the extension of the sawhorse legs. And this is going to vary based upon your desired height. Using my speed square helps me keep the same measurements and make it a little bit quicker as I mark each board. A quick test fit. And then once we're good, we burn the edges and start attaching them. After the webbing's attached, a quick test and measure to make sure it's the right height and sweet, we're good to go. So you just flip it around and do it again. And there they are, the sawhorses for the Ron Polk workbench. This has been an awesome project so far, and I hope you stay tuned for the next one where we talk about the actual workbench assembly. Hey, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you later.